and welcome. We are here again with the Space Tech Europe pre-event uh, little uh, interview to encourage you, to inspire you, to start thinking about your ideas for the Space Tech hack happening on the 3rd to 5th of December. So uh, get ready to share your ideas, find your new team members and get building your new idea. Today we are um, having an interview with Jean-Jacques Dordain and I'm hoping and I know already that it's going to be really, really great uh, knowing how much you, you have actually um, been through and uh, participated and really um, led the space tech uh, field in Europe. So Jean-Jacques Dordain is here today with us. He has had a long scientific career. He has been uh, a professor, he has been doing research, he has been uh, in the executive positions in many different uh, space organizations. And uh, well, most importantly, I'm guessing it's the European Space Agency that uh, he was the director general of between 2003 and 2015. So really, uh, really leading the space and, uh, and looking at it from a global view from here, Europe. But also an interesting fact uh, that uh, you have also been the candidate for an European astronaut. So many different views of the, of the space uh, field. So my first question to you, of course, hello and welcome. But my first hello. question is, how did you actually, um, uh, well, then start with the space tech and how did you, uh, uh, you have been there so long. What has kept you there? <laughs> yes, no, I have, I have not chosen to be in space, but uh, I was uh, uh, taken in space. Uh, just to say that I am old enough to have known uh, a world without space, because, uh, yeah. and uh, just to say, I, I entered into, uh, into high school uh, on the 1st of October, 1957. And uh, it was a shock for me because I had to, to leave my parents and that, that okay, I shall not uh, uh, spend too much time on that. But just to say that, so it was difficult to go, uh, to, to move to a different school. But thanks to the Soviet on the 4th of October 1957, it was Sputnik. And I must say that I have totally uh, wiped out the fact that uh, I had to leave my parents because I was in space and I am in space since the 4th of October 1957 and I have uh, I have not come back and I have no intention to come back so it's uh, and uh, since then I am in space and I have uh, I was lucky to, uh, to 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 be able to work in space for uh, so long but uh, that's right I have never chosen to go to space I was taken in space, which is totally different. And I have enjoyed every minute of my life in space. And uh, so, uh, as you said, I have, uh, I started to be an engineer working on rocket engines. Uh, and that was uh, a very interesting uh, part of my life. Uh, I have, uh, uh, I have been a candidate and selected by France among the five first French be, uh, to be, to be an astronaut, but, uh, since uh, there were much uh, better guys than me, uh, the backup was to become director general of ESA. So, uh, because when you cannot be uh, the one that you want to, to be, better to be their boss. And uh, so uh, this is what I have done. And uh, since I left ESA, I am still in space. I am working with now uh, 15 startups. And uh, I enjoy that because uh, it's, uh, it, it's space. This is the same objectives than when I was at ESA in the public sector, uh, but it's a totally different approach, and I enjoy that very much. Yeah, it's, it's of course very exciting to uh, hear that you've gone through the process of, uh, you know, becoming an astronaut, whether you were or were not accepted. I think, uh, you know, I always think that people that are willing and thinking about going to space are uh, are very special. But I read about uh, you and in one of the interviews you said, well, if you're not an astronaut, then no one really uh, asks you, you know, everybody wants to know what the people in space are doing, what are they dreaming about, what are they eating, how are they sleeping and so on, but <laughs> no one really asks you. So I'm going to yes, ask you, yes, yes. what do you dream yeah. about? <laughs> no, no, but this is true. It's, I used to say that uh, 
when I am on stage, when I was in, on stage as director general with an astronaut, uh, nobody cared about the director general. And uh, I have tried to, to understand why. And I, uh, and, and I arrived to the conclusion it's because uh, uh, the, an astronaut is a human, a director general is not a human. And that uh, is uh, uh, a bureaucrat, he's an engineer, he's whatever, but uh, he's not taken as a human. And uh, the proof is that, yes, the questions to the astronauts is about their dreams, their, uh, what they eat, uh, how they, uh, how they, uh, they sleep and, and so on, which nobody has ever, ever asked me that. Uh, but I have not given up. To, to become an astronaut and uh, and thanks to Jeff Bezos because uh, you know that uh, in uh, in May something uh, this year he has uh, uh, put uh, put a, a seat on sale for the first flight which took place on the 20th of July with Jeff Bezos himself and uh, I have tried to, to write to him to say that uh, uh, instead of uh, putting a seat on sale much better to fly for free uh, the former director general of Visa, but okay, I, I was not successful, but after the flight, understanding that uh, it was Wally Funk who uh, flew on that first flight and she was the youngest woman ever selected in the United States to become an astronaut in the 60s, I have written again to Monsieur Bezos to say that uh, uh, in that case, since he has flown the youngest woman selected in the US, he, he could fly the youngest French uh, ever selected to be an astronaut in the 70s and uh, was not again, I, I failed. Uh, but since he has uh, flown uh, uh, Captain uh, whatever from Star Trek, who is 90. And uh, so I have written to Jeff Bezos that I thanked him very much because he has increased the margins uh, in front of me. Uh, because now I have uh, 15 years to fly, so it's uh, so I shall I shall succeed. I wish to fly uh, because that would complete the, the uh, my uh, my journey in space. It definitely would, yeah. And now we know what you dream about then, yeah, to fly into space. And uh... yes, yes, but I have much much more many dreams. I must say that uh, that uh, uh, and this is one of the. Uh, one of, of what space delivers to, to humans on, on planet Earth. Uh, uh, space delivers knowledge, delivers services, and delivers dreams. And this is the three main products of space uh, to, uh, for the humans. And I think that, uh, and I can tell you that uh, this is what, uh, what I got from space. Uh, knowledge, uh, services, and, and dreams. And that is continuing and will continue. That is really nicely said. And I think, you know, a lot of this hackathon, uh, you know, the, the community around the hackathon, it's, it's a lot about education and knowledge, right? Yes. And how can we get more people understanding without having maybe a longer, uh, you know, scientific background or, or choosing well, it education, as such? Education is key for the future of humans uh, on, on planet Earth. Uh, and, uh, uh, some, some maybe know that uh, I, I have been uh, part of the initiative of Luxembourg in, uh, for exploiting the space uh, resources, uh, because unfortunately we are consuming uh, more and more uh, resources of planet Earth. And uh, uh, since uh, I was born long time ago, I agree, uh, but the, the, the population of the world has, has increased by a factor of three. When I was at school myself, uh, we were uh, 2.7 billion of inhabitants. Now we are more than 7 billion. But during the same time, the natural resources of planet Earth, the consumption has been increased by a factor of 20, meaning wow. that the population has increased by a factor of three, but the natural resources are uh, consumed uh, more by a factor of 20. And that is one of the problems because we are living on a finite spacecraft which is planet earth and we are consuming more and more the natural resources of that spacecraft and uh, and uh, what i am saying is that the only natural resources which are increasing on planet earth this is the brains of the children 
there is more and more people, meaning that there are more and more brains. And these brains, they can bring a solution to our mm. problems, provided they are educated. So this is a duty of, uh, of everyone to make sure mm. that all the brains of all children in the world will be uh, properly educated. And uh, that is, and as you have said, I am still a professor because you are director general for a limited period of time, even if in my case it was 12 years, which was long. Uh, but you are a professor all your, all your life. I, uh, I, I, and I continue to, to be a professor because I think that transferring knowledge and experience is, uh, is very important because this is a way we can educate because what I am telling to my... Uh, to my students see that uh, uh, unfortunately for them we the the old guys we have uh, solved the easiest problems so we have made the easy part meaning that the the young generation will have more difficult problems to solve and meaning that they have to be much better than i have been myself uh, and this is what we have to contribute it's to make the next generation much better than the current generation and that is certainly uh, certainly one of the uh, conditions for uh, sustaining uh, humanity on planet earth definitely well if you talk more about education um, obviously there's you know shortage of uh, talent in each field but uh, what do you see as the really um, important skills that the space tech field needs i think that a space a space tech needs much, uh, much wider expertise. Let's say when, when I have started myself in space, uh, we were uh, basically rocket engineers and uh, scientists, and uh, we were a small family of, uh, of people. Uh, this was a space family. But now space has become much too important uh, to uh, just be limited to the, sp to the rocket engineers and to the scientists. I think that uh, space needs much wider expertise. We, we need, we, we need uh, uh, again, engineers and scientists, but we need uh, lawyers, we need uh, communicators, we need uh, uh, professors, we need uh, uh, sales uh, men, because, because again, uh, space has been uh, driven by a technology push for, for long. But now space has entered the, uh, the daily life of uh, more and more people, meaning that uh, it's more and more driven by the users. And it should be. Uh, and by doing that, we need not only, again, the engineers and the scientists to provide solutions, but we need the people to understand the problems. When I was DG of Visa, I was telling to my colleagues, we have to stop to, uh, to design a solution and, and then look for a problem. We have first to understand the problems and then design the solution. And, then for, uh, and that it's a totally uh, reverse uh, way to, uh, to define space uh, solutions because we have to define space solutions to <laughs> problems of planet Earth. I think that uh, this is certainly, uh, uh, space is becoming a normal sector. He, space has entered the economic, uh, the economic dimension, the social dimension of uh, living, uh, living on planet Earth. But the, but the supplement of space is the dreams. Let's say, uh, we, we, again, as we deliver knowledge as many other scientists are delivering. We deliver services as many other solutions are de delivering services. But what we have en plus are the dreams and uh, we have to keep the dreams. Yeah. I'm hoping that uh, the hackathon really, um, you know, kind of helps along with this idea because what hackathons really are, right? We gather people from all different uh, walks of life and different competencies and skills who are just interested. And, you know, we need to inject these dreams uh, in them as well. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping that uh, the Europe-wide hackathon will do that. 
Um, of course, you know, we our goal is to gather a lot of people, but um, what do you think is, uh, you know, what, what kind of direction would you give them who are gathering to the hackathon? What kind of challenges to, uh, to space they have that, uh, that you would direct the participants towards? Yeah. Like, where are the dreams? Okay. First of all, I, I, and after I shall stop to speak about my experience, but uh, I think that one of the most important lessons learned from my experience is the, the benefit of cooperation and the benefit of competition at the same time. And this is not at all uh, antagonist uh, because we need to cooperate. And it's what I uh, always what I say. Uh, uh, we cooperate because we have mutual interest. And our basic mutual interest is our common future. There is no individual future on planet Earth. Uh, there is only a common future. And meaning that we have mutual interest. So when you have a mutual interest, you cooperate. Uh, because you don't cooperate because you like your neighbor. You cooperate because you have a mutual interest with your neighbor. Uh, that my wife hates that when I say that mutual interest is much more sustainable than love. You, 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 I have worked with so many different people, so many different nationalities that I could not like all of them, but I have worked with them because we had common interest and we had common objectives. And that is uh, the, the, the benefit of cooperation. And it's not easy to cooperate. You have to learn how to cooperate. And this is the reason why I am telling to all the students, you have to learn as early as possible to cooperate because the human factor of cooperation is very, very important. So, so that is the, the interest of cooperation. But on the other hand, we need competition because if there is no competition, the solutions will not be uh, the best ones. So we have to, to have a cooperation of interest but the competition of ideas and the competition is very, very important because you are much better when you are in competition. When, uh, when I run alone, I, when I run alone, uh, now I am a little bit uh, too old, but I have run marathon and so on. Uh, let's say you, you are much better when you, when you compete, when you are involved in a race. Uh, not when you train. When you train, you have always a good reason to uh, to go back home. Uh, while when you run a marathon in New York, you you are in a race and you wish to be faster than your neighbor. So the, the virtue of competition is very important. So the the world is made of cooperation and competition at the same time. So and that is certainly something that I would like to. To, 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 to transfer to, to, to all the, the, the new generation. And the, uh, now, which are the two biggest challenges that we have in space? Uh, the first one is to decrease the cost of space products and space services. Uh, because we, the, spa the space uh, actors, we have unfortunately developed processes which are leading to success. But we were so careful that we have put in place processes which are long, a number of tests, a number of things before we launch, which is good to be successful, but which is bad for the cost and, the, and time. When, when I see that United States, NASA, they, they, they succeeded in the 60s to develop Saturn V in six years with sliding rules. There was no computer at that time. But they succeeded to make Saturn V in six years and launch uh, uh, the Apollo astronauts to the moon. Uh, today, the same NASA and the same industry, this is 15 years that they are working uh, on SLS and with a lot of computers, the best engineers of the world and, and so on. No, no complaint. And what is the difference? The difference is the fact that we are much, we, we have become much too careful. We are living in a risk adverse society. So we don't like risks. But if you don't want to take risks, you have to pay. So uh, 
what I would like is uh, to reverse a little bit. I am not saying that we have to fail at each uh, launch or at each, uh, but we have to make to 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 put the cost of space products and services at the level of uh, a normal sector, because the space solutions are not in competition between themselves. The space solutions and especially for services, they are in competition with the ground solutions. Space telecommunication, it's not space, it's telecommunications. And, uh, and the competition is not between space operators, but between a space operator and a ground operator. And, and for that, we have to decrease the cost. And there is a lot to do to, uh, for doing that. So this is the first challenge. The second challenge is that we have to see all the solutions to go farther and faster. Unfortunately, exploring even the, the, the surroundings of uh, planet Earth takes much too long, much too long. As, as I said, I was very proud uh, being DG of ISA to have Rosetta uh, landing on the comet uh, in, two, in 2014. But I was, as I was saying when I was uh, DG and commenting that, I said, unfortunately, the best quality of a scientist, a space scientist, is to be in good health because it took five years to, de to decide Rosetta. 10 years to develop it, and more than 10 years to go to the comet. 25 years between the, the idea and the first data. The, the same to go to Mars. Let's say, I hear a lot of uh, the, the missions to Mars, but today we are going to Mars in, in such a way that it takes months, meaning that we have to wait for Mars being close to planet Earth, meaning that we, we have a window of a few weeks every 26 months to go to Mars. We cannot continue like that. If we wish to go to Mars, much better to find propulsion systems, to find a, a fuel station, whatever, whatever solutions. It's not now I am too old to find the solutions, but that this is a challenge that I am giving to all the young guys who wish to do something good for space design the solution to go farther and faster. We cannot to be so slow to take years and years to go to go somewhere in the solar system that it's not possible anymore. So all that, as I said, I have made the easy part. Now you have to make the difficult part. And uh, But there is so much to do compared mm. to what we have done before. So... Uh, there is several generations uh, who, uh, who will have a lot of problems to solve, which is good. Which is good, of course. And yeah, I picked up on many things and uh, a really interesting answer there. I was thinking about uh, when you, you already mentioned, of course, the faces and hope uh, he answers you soon. But also, uh, you know, Elon Musk. And when we think about space these days, we think about these, you know, very bold uh, entrepreneurs kind of uh, doing the startup thing right moving fast and breaking a lot of very expensive things uh, versus maybe the the more traditional uh, space uh, space field or uh, uh, industry so what do you think is the good good balance between that i think uh, that the, the two are necessary I, when i say that the, the, i am working with startups but i have not never said that the startups will replace the traditional uh, uh, well-established industry, the two are necessary, as well as the, the private investment and the public investment. By the way, the private investment, for the time being, they represent less than 10% of the total investment in space. The, the, the public investment is still the big uh, part of investments in space. So, uh, but what is interesting is that the private investments are not replacing the public investments. On the contrary, the public investments have never grown so fast than since we have private investment, which is a demonstration that there is a, a synergy between the two, the two worlds. There is a synergy between the private world and the public world. There is a synergy between the, the traditional industry and the startups. 
and and this is normal because again the objectives are the same the the the, the private and public the the traditional industry and the startup they are there to deliver as i said knowledge services and dreams so uh, they, they are not they are not in opposition they they uh, they, they are helping each other and uh, the the public sector benefit from the the cost of the private sector, but the private sector benefit from the market of the public sector. So th there is no, uh, they, they need each other, and uh, w which is good. I think that uh, we would be stupid to divide the world in uh, different parts. I think that we are there to unify the world, not to to to, to part the world. I think that uh, I have lived myself the reunification between the, the the West and the and the East part of the world, and the ISS is the best demonstration of the reunification of the West and, uh, and of the East, and it was a fantastic experience for me. Uh, so we should we should try to avoid to again separate the world in different parts. Yeah. You also mentioned, uh, well, it's it's crazy to think, right? Twenty five years to uh, to go from uh, idea to uh, to actually something. Um, you know, the hackathon promises that you will go from an idea to a prototype in forty eight hours. So that's <laughs> with the uh, two extremes. No, but, but that is uh, you are not traveling in space, and uh, <laughs> what uh, what you should. Uh, uh, put as an objective is uh, yeah. to, to travel in space very very fast and, and especially yeah. much faster than what we are uh, doing right now definitely but do you think there is a there can be uh you know solutions uh, brainstormed and prototyped in i am sure that there are solutions there are other propulsion systems let's say we, today most of the propulsion system are the ones who have been designed during the second world war I think that uh, a rocket engine, and I know uh, what is a rocket engine, I have worked a lot on, on them. Uh, let's say the, the, this is the same type of propulsion. We have not, okay, now there is electric propulsion. Uh, uh, someday there was a significant development of nuclear propulsion. So, uh, and there is several types of nuclear propulsion. So there is a lot of, of, of different type of propulsion. Obviously, solar cells is also an interesting uh, propulsion system, but uh, it will not go faster than this is. Uh, but so we have to work on propulsion, but we have also to work on, on space resources. As, as I said, uh, I, am, I have become uh, convinced of the, the interest of space resources for space missions. Uh, and the space missions are the first uh, customers of space resources. Uh, as I am explaining to my grandchildren, uh, if uh, their father would take them to Normandy from Paris uh, by bringing all the fuel that he needs to go and uh, come back, all the, the, the water that they need uh, for, the, for the weekend, all, the, all the, the, the food that they need for the weekend, he would not go very far uh, for very long. Fortunately, there is gas station on the on the highway. There is uh, uh, shops where you can buy uh, what. When we go to space, we bring every kilogram of hardware, every liter of liquid from planet Earth. Mm -hmm. This is totally stupid, uh, and I am sure that the lunar base will not be sustainable if we are not able to use the lunar resources. We cannot bring everything from planet Earth to, to the moon. So the use of space resources will change also the way we are traveling in space. And uh, as I said to the boss of Total, the day is opening a gas station, a fuel station between uh, planet Earth and Mars. All the Mars missions would go uh, for refueling. Obviously, it's an image, but so there is a lot to do to try and go faster and farther. Uh, but that uh, there is a lot of solutions that I am convinced of that. Now it's not to me to find a solution anymore. I think that, uh, but at least to challenge a little bit the, the young generation. That's it. I think that you, what you're doing right now as well, right? And I was gonna ask you to uh, talk a little bit more what to do 
uh, these days I know that you're advising an Estonian startup uh, space it as well yes. but what, yes, yes. tell us a little bit more what you're doing uh, then what well, I am, inspiring the I new am, generation well, I, am, I am still doing a lot uh, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, I met uh, the, the, the current director general of Visa, and he was asking me, uh, "How are you? How, how are you? Do, uh, how, how are you doing?" And I, I was answering, "I regret the good old times where I had nothing to do at Visa." So uh, <laughs> it was not uh, but okay. He, he realized that it was a joke, but. I am as busy and, uh, as when I was at ISA. Uh, I am working for uh, the government of Luxembourg on space resources, working in Switzerland uh, on, uh, on their space uh, strategy uh, for the Emirates also. And I am associated to 15 startups. Um, and I have decided that I, I will go to 22 because 22 is the number of member states at ISA. So I always say I could manage 22 member states. I can uh, certainly manage uh, to help uh, 15, uh, 15 uh, uh, 22 startups. But I am today only at 15. And, uh, and I, have a diff I have the role that they ask me to have. I am not telling them you have to do that. Uh, I am not anymore uh, a manager. So I am there just to help. Uh, bonjour. <laughs> the, uh, and uh, I, I am just there to to respond to their questions. They have a lot of questions, and I am very glad to to respond. So some of them uh, ask me to to be chair of the board. Uh, some others uh, I am in the advisory board. But it's not. I am not looking for a position. I am just looking to help young teams, and I like this. Uh, uh, these young guys who come to me and say, "I wish to make the best launcher of the of the world. I I wish to make the best satellite of the world. Uh, the, deliver the best services." And I said, "Okay, uh, it's a good starting point to to to, uh, to wish to be the best." Uh, and uh, I am always asking them, "What is your difference?" Because if you have no difference, I'm not sure that you will uh, you will realize your dreams. But if you have a difference and you, if you are motivated, I am convinced that you will create value, which is the most important part. We have, they have to create value. So I am working with all these startups. And by the way, I can say that I am even uh, helping startups which are themselves in competition. That it's uh, because uh, what I would like is to, uh, to help all the ones who have good ideas, including the ones who are in competition, because as I said before, I like competition. Competition is uh, very, very uh, productive. And uh, so uh, I, uh, I am working every day of, the, uh, of every week, and, uh, and that's, I, en I enjoy every minute of, uh, of my life. Yeah. Totally non-stop. But, uh... Not too sure if you can uh, mention, uh, well, not definitely all the all of them, but uh, are there any good examples of those startups, like uh, really what you think that is uh, creating a lot of value and that could be a good example for the hackathon well, participants? The, to, to I, I would not like to, to mention names of the startup. I am not there to, to make publicity. You have said that, uh, yes, I am advising one Estonian one, uh, but uh, that you know and that I shall not mention the name, but they are good ones. And uh, mm. uh, I wish the success of all of them. Uh, and uh, so I am with uh, four startups making uh, new new launchers, which is uh, good. Uh, and I am sure that uh, at least uh, one or two of them will will succeed to make uh, to make their dreams. And uh, and it's a totally different approach because uh, I have made launcher when I was at ISA, first as director of launcher because before becoming director general I was director of launcher. But the way we have done uh, launchers at ISA is a, a, a different approach from the way that the startups uh, are doing their, uh, their, their, their launchers. And, uh, uh, and the two are good. I am not saying that uh, an ISA launcher is, 
uh, is better than a, a new uh, startup launcher or the other the other way around they, they have all their interests and merits and uh, we need launchers anyway uh, there is more and more satellites during the first 60 years we have launched 100 satellites per year in the world now it's more than 1000 per year so there is a factor of 10 uh, in the number of satellites uh, to be launched meaning that we need more launches and uh, and uh, we shall see which are their business case, but uh, but anyway, each of them is bringing something. And even if the business case is at the end not uh, solid enough, they will have brought technical solutions which are interesting technical solutions. And it it's what I call uh, creating value. Mm. Uh, and even if you don't create value for your investors in the short term. I am sure that you create value for the long, for the longer term, because all these technologies which have, which will have been developed during this uh, 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 period of startup, will will be useful. I, I am working with with startups, uh, and that it's maybe interesting, which are using technologies on which I have worked myself in the 70s, in terms of propulsion especially in terms of propulsion, because as I said, when I have started as an engineer, I was a rocket engineer. But there are two technologies. Again, I shall not mention the names uh, of, of the startups, but I can, the, the ones who, who know on what I have worked, they could recognize. But I have worked on, the, on engines in the 70s, technologies which have been developed in the 70s, but which had not, no business case to make it uh, short. So they were uh, put on the, on the drawer. But 50 years later, they come back. Meaning that what we have done in the 70s is not totally lost because they can, they can start from there to, uh, to develop new uh, uh, launchers, which may today have a business case, even though they're, they're was no business case in the in the 70s uh, but they let, take monsieur musk monsieur musk is using technologies the merlin engine is uh, not the most updated engine of the world he has used uh, a technology which is uh, uh, decades uh, decades old but it works works very well uh, is he, uh, the, the, wh what he has done it's to to give uh, a business case to a technology which has been developed uh, decades ago. And that is something that, uh, and I am sure that uh, creating value is always good, always good. It's always good, yeah. And I, I, I'm also picking up what, uh, and, uh, you know, in my other, in those other conversations as well, I think the most important thing about uh, space field is the collaboration, right? You mentioned all yes. of it in this interview, like the different yes. nations, different agencies, startups, private sector, public sector. So kind of everything. Is there is there something that you see you know that that should happen in the coming years like we've talked uh, beforehand okay. here about like regulation can... framework and what do you see what's the dream there in collaboration oh, my my dream is to 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 uh, to move towards a more and more global cooperation let's say i uh, myself i always said to my colleagues of nasa roscosmos uh, uh, china japan i always told them if there is one topic on which I can teach you, it's cooperation. Because cooperation is our daily work at ESA. We are working uh, among 23 nationalities, so we don't know not to cooperate. Uh, we are cooperating every day. Uh, and, uh, and as I said many times, cooperation is difficult, not easy to cooperate. And, um, uh, but what, what I wish to say that uh, we have, and I have contributed to that, uh, reconcile the, the east and the west part in, in space with the International Space Station. And, uh, and I, I shall quote uh, my colleague Mike Griffin, who, who was uh, the administrator of NASA uh, when I was uh, ESA Director General, and we are still very good friends. 
Uh, by the way, I was with him in the previous uh, uh, video conference. So, uh, but uh, Griffin was telling 20 years ago when we were working uh, together on the International Space Station, he said something which was very interesting. He said the partnership of the space station will last longer than the hardware. And that I said to have a US guy, the leader of the space world, uh, uh, Mike Griffin saying that it's a fantastic sentence. Unfortunately, unfortunately, 20 years later, I am not sure anymore that it will be true. Because when I see that uh, for the lunar exploration, that there is uh, uh, again, maybe two parts of the world, uh, United States on one side with his uh, usual partners and Russia and China uh, on the other side, I must say that I take that as a pity, as a pity, because uh, uh, it would be a step backwards while we need a step forward, which is, again, to develop uh, more and more glo global cooperation and space. You, you can be enemies on ground. You, 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 you can have 99.9% .9 of uh, different interests, but I am sure that you can have a niche of common interests in space. And by the way, this is what I said uh, several times in conference in Washington, D.C. Uh, United States and USSR, you were not born. Uh, so you, you, uh, maybe you don't, uh, you don't remember that. But let's say, United States and USSR in the 70s, they were enemies. Uh, and I can tell you that I was living uh, already at that time. But they succeeded to make a joint mission in 1975, which was the Apollo mission. It was three U.S. astronauts shaking hands with two uh, Soviet cosmonauts. And that was a fantastic signal. I can tell you that I was a young engineer at that time. To see three astronauts from the United States and two cosmonauts from the Soviet Union shaking hands in space, it was fantastic. And, and and for, for young people, as I was at that time, to, to have that, that was making of space a fantastic place because it was a place where people could work together even if they were enemies on ground. And what I would like is to, uh, to continue that and not to, uh, to make step backwards. So I think that uh, we, we should use space as... Uh, a laboratory of cooperation, even between enemies on ground, uh, which I can understand. I can understand that you can have different interests on, on planet Earth. But it's what I am telling to everyone. Please have at least niches of common interest in space. That would be good. This is a really great thought. Um... Yeah, as, as we are running out of time here, so, um, you know. Yes, I am speaking too much, yes. No, you're not, you're speaking just uh, just enough and uh, and really uh, interesting thoughts. And, you know, uh, you said it just really nicely that, and I think uh, the hackathon is, uh, is there uh, for that as well, right? To bring the knowledge, the services and the dreams together. And we're hoping to uh, attract uh, quite a lot of people that might not be uh, yet in uh, even, you know, connected with Space Tech in any case. And, and I'm really sure that this uh, this talk will inspire them to do that and, and to be part of that global cooperation. So anything to finish off with to kind of um, a little call to action to the participants who are still thinking of uh, taking part in the hackathon, what would be your uh, wishes to them? Oh, I must say, enjoy, enjoy. This is what I, what I wish to all of them, is just to enjoy. I think that, uh, and if they enjoy, they will never work in their life. And uh, myself, I can, I can tell you that I continue not to work. And uh, that this is certainly the, the best wishes that I can, I can have for uh, all these guys. Thank you. Well, Mr. Dodain, this has been a really great talk and um, I'm really hoping that uh, Jeff Bezos will get back to you soon and uh, we'll be <laughs> seeing you flying to space. Uh, okay. But today, uh, thank you for, the, for, for your time and, and for your thoughts and 
to everybody listening thanks for thanks for listening in and hope to see you at the hackathon okay thank you very much